Hello, this is Kishore here and today we will be uh, presenting the video KB for uh, the JDBC ODBC bridge and uh, how to configure the bridge with the uh, data archive tool. So uh, this will be the agenda for today's uh, session. Uh, so we will be starting with what is the JDBC ODBC bridge and uh, this will be followed by uh, configuring the connection uh, in order to connect to an ODBC data source from the data archive tool so uh, to start with what is JDBC ODBC bridge so uh, the JDBC ODBC bridge allows the uh, various JDBC application the various allows the applications to connect to ODBC data DSNs via the JDBC URL so uh, ideally uh, this is very useful for data archive because the data archive cannot directly connect to the ODBC sources so we we'll need to use the JDBC ODBC bridge in order to connect to the ODBC sources and uh, this is mainly used for the connection for various power exchange sources because for the other sources that data archive supports we already have a direct JDBC connection so also uh, some of the sources that uh, we support from the uh, power, uh, data archive and through power exchange uh, in order to perform the connectivity so the sources are also highlighted in the slide Adabas, uh, ISAM and uh, Datacom, IDMS, IMS, VSAM and uh, sequential flat files so what are the prerequisites for uh, usage of the JDBC ODBC bridge with uh, data archive so uh, again uh, the bridge works fine with uh, uh, the tool in both windows as well as all the unix ax hpux solaris and linux environment so uh, the prerequisite for usage on linux uh, the unix environment is uh, there should be the unix odbc package installed as well as the power exchange uh, adapter is on one of the uh, following operating systems where the ilm server runs so uh, when speaking about the ODBC DSN so ILM has uh, two components one is the EDM client and other is the ILM server itself so uh, we'll need to have two DSNs uh, set up for the power exchange uh, listener so one DSN needs to be configured on the machine where you're going to mine the data through the EDM and the other one needs to be configured on the power uh, the data archive server but again the connectivity to power exchange is needed for the server operations so uh, in both cases we'll be using the odbc dsn so um, on linux the prerequisite for uh, usage of the odbc dsn is uh, you need to install the unix odbc package and also configure the ld preload environment variable uh, to the file path of the libodbc.so file so this is a prerequisite from the data archive and in order to use the JDBC ODBC bridge. So uh, speaking about uh, JDBC ODBC bridge, this is uh, just like any other JDBC connection. Only thing is, uh, this is used in cases where we do not have the direct connection possible because uh, the end database that we are connecting to only provides us an ODBC interface in order to access it. Uh, it is valid for uh, the power exchange as already stated and uh, the prerequisites are also explained here with so uh, we'll go ahead with the next slide so uh, configuring the connections so uh, it's a simple source connection that we are trying to configure here data archive access does not support a target connection to be present in the jdbc odbc bridge so we support only in the source end um, so uh, again uh, We'll be seeing the demo on the EDM level connection. Let me just open up the EDM tool. From an EDM perspective, uh, we'll be mining the metadata in order to perform the, in order to create the entities in the EDM tool. So in order to import the metadata from the database, we need to use the uh, JDBC ODBC bridge. So here in this case, we'll be using the uh, power exchange DSN that is already configured on my machine so uh, so the data will be using the power exchange adapter and here providing the data source name in order to 
access the data from this particular source so let me just uh, connect to the source so here we'll be going ahead with the mining choose the uh, bi so here we'll be choosing the particular uh, the schema that we need to mine from and uh, give the continuum extract metadata through EDM option. So this will allow us to extract the metadata. The main condition here is the DSN name that we are providing at this point is the local Windows DSN that is created because when you use the EDM client, it connects to the local Windows machine and in turn connects to the DSN that is configured. So again, this is the bridge that we are using. So here we have the list of tables popping up. So we can mine this table like any other normal table. Just mine the count table. Finish. As completed, we will be finding the table and the related information in the EDM. Uh, let me just go back to the presentation again. That is one part of the usage of the grid. So, in the EDM level, we do not uh, need to use any other uh, particular configuration. The bridge will be used by the power exchange adapter internally. So, again, uh, in case we want to use the uh, DSN explicitly without providing the adapter details, uh, how do we do that? So, I'll be showing that part on the EDM, the connection details and explaining it now. So, this is another part of the uh, mining. So, here again, uh, another way of using the JDBC ODBC uh, bridge. So here if you see we are providing a custom JDBC URL manually where we are telling what is the ODBC DSN that we want to use. This is another power exchange DSN that I have configured and the driver that we need to provide as part of this is the Sun JDBC ODBC driver. So uh, it'll be good if we can uh, make a note of this driver name and uh, this is a case sensitive driver so it needs to be made sure that uh, the driver name that we provide while mining needs to be provided in uh, this particular case itself and uh, the username and password in order to access the DSN is provided so when we follow these steps also again uh, we'll be going through the same set of screen that we had seen earlier so so here again we see the same set of uh, schemas and uh, following the schemas we'll be able to choose the tables to mine and uh, go ahead with the mining process in the EDM. So again the main point to note here is uh, the ODBC DSN that you have configured is local to the machine where you are running the uh, EDM tool. So let me just go back to the presentation. The next part of configuration is configuration of the source connection in the LM with the ODBC DSN. So let me just open up the ILM UI. So this is a sample uh, screen where you have the option. Uh, so here I have just gone to my new source connection and configured a new archive source as you are seeing here. So uh, this archive source connection that I have created is of type custom JDBC ODBC and uh, it's just like any other source connection you need to choose the application version provide the staging and uh, the admin and the application schema and user details and another important parameter is the data source name that we provide here and the data the data the dsn that we provide here in this part is a dsn that is configured on the ilm data archive server end so it needs to be made sure that the server hosting the data archive services has this particular dsn configured as part of the uh, user the user on behalf of which the ilm data archive service runs because when we save this connection it will try to connect to that particular data source and then go ahead with the creation of the connection towards that dsn so in case of any error when you save it you'll be able to find it uh, the save is disabled because i've just opened an existing connection but uh, the prerequisites here as already mentioned is that you need to have the particular DSN configured. Uh, let me just uh, go to the party session and show where exactly the ODBC is configured. So by default, the ODBC I9 is present under the web file archive. So I've already configured it. Uh, so the DSN that I am trying to use here is the DSN named uh, DB2ZOS. So this will be the value I've provided here. 
and uh, you can use ssg odbc tool in order to perform the test connection and confirm if the connectivity exists from the uh, data archive and so um, so from the connection perspective uh, i have already shown how to configure the connection for the uh, ilm data archive uh, service as well as from the edm end and uh, uh, to go ahead with the summary in this session we just saw what the JDBC ODBC bridge is and how it can be configured with EDM and the data archive uh, server in the web console. And uh, another important uh, point to note here is uh, one of the KB articles that is referred in this KB. It is with the KB ID 15339 that explains on how to test if an ODBC connection is accessible or not via the SSG ODBC tool. So this would be useful in cases for troubleshooting when you think that you are facing an issue with the uh, connectivity to the ODBC since you are unable to save the connection from the uh, ILM data archive. Let me just uh, navigate through the KB once. So uh, this tool again can be downloaded from the debug tools directly under the info home and also this particular KB also has a link to the tools. So uh, the in the attachment section you will find the link to the SSG ODBC tool and it pretty much elaborates on what needs to be done in order to test if a uh, ODBC DSN is accessible or not. So the, the tool works on almost all the platforms where uh, the ILM data archive tool is supported as well. So it has a demo of uh, how the test is done. So uh, coming back to the presentation, so that should be it uh, regard to configuration of JDBC ODBC bridge with uh, data archive. And uh, in case you want to have video KBs on more topics, uh, feel free to send an email to support videos at informatica.com or uh, post your responses by tweeting on the Twitter across Infra support. Uh, so that should be it. So thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. Thank you.